Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the South Central Louisiana State Dynasty where today we are right here at home against the Georgia State Panthers and you know we it should be a good game you know this is the first time in a long time that we actually are favored as Stan Castillo drops back the pass and Ryan Wilson actually lets it go through his hand so incomplete pass uh, to start out for the day for the Mud Dogs offense. Next play is going to be a halfback draw up the middle for Casey Bug, but Casey Bug gets slammed for a loss of four yards. So right off the bat, we have a third and 14 and coming up for the Mud Dogs. Next play, it's going to be a drop back. It's going to go to Darren Joyce. Joyce is able to get behind his man. Can he go away? He only has one man to beat. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Mud Dogs to start off the day. Darren Joyce is able to go 77 yards. Not only gets the first down, but he also gets the touchdown as the Mud Dogs will be able to pull ahead 7 to nothing. Wow, what an electric play by both Darren Joyce and a nice throw by Stan Castillo. Georgia State now is going to have the ball, see what they uh, come up with as their very first play. It's going to be a quick throw over to Kerry Brown, who ga gains five yards on the play and makes it a reasonable second and five. Next play, Georgia State is going to be in the shotgun once again, and it's going to be another drop back for quarterback Micah Pitts. Pitts is able to get away from multiple defenders. He breaks another tackle, and he's able to get out of bounds, but not before he gains 15 yards on the play. Very nice run by, by the running quarterback from Georgia State. Next play, Micah Pitt goes up to the line, raises his team into the audible. It looks like a wide receiver quick run, and it's going to go to Kerry Brown once again as he gets his first carry of the day, this time for 12 yards for a Georgia State first down. Next up, you got Georgia State is on a drive at the 43-yard line. He's going to drop back the pass. It's going to go to Lorenzo Clark, the star tight end for this Georgia State offense. It's going to go for a gain of 20 yards on the play. Nice little connection for the quarterback tight end combination. Next up, Georgia State is approaching the red zone, and it's going to be a handoff over to, looks like, it appears to be Pat Garcia gains nine yards on the play, makes it a very reasonable second and one. Couple of plays later, as uh, they are approaching the goal line, it's going to be a run up the middle, and we thought we are going to be able to tackle him at the line, but Garcia is able to get away, and it's going to be a seven-yard gain on the play, makes it second and three for Georgia State. Third and inches now, see what Georgia State comes up with. Micah Pitt is going to run and... Just as Beverly is about to get the sack, he gets undercut at the last second. And Micah Pitt is able to get just enough in order to get the first down. So here we go. First and goal at the one-yard line. See if uh, this Mud Dogs defense can get a stop. And Micah Pitt gets stacked for nine yards. Ben Cook, the true freshman for for the Mud Dogs defensive line is able to shed off multiple offensive linemen and is able to get into the quarterback, get into that backfield and get a second, make it a longer second and goal. Next play though, it doesn't really matter because Lorenzo Clark does get into the end zone for a nine yard reception touchdown as Georgia State is able to even it up at seven with about two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Mud Dogs will now have their turn at the, at the offensive side of the ball. First play is going to go over to Ryan Wilson on the curl route. You're able to get away from the defender, create that separation, and gain 13 yards on the play. Next play is going to be a halfback counter, this time to Casey Bug. This time around, he's able to gain yardage on the play. Always nice when you're able to go forward and is able to gain 6 yards on the play. Second and four now for the Mud Dogs, just about to approach midfield and tries to get it to Ryan Wilson once again, but unfortunately they cannot make the connection. Ho hopefully on the next play we'll be able to get things together for, for another first down. But let's see what the Mud Dogs come up with, and it's just a little offline. He had TJ Wood for a split second, but it's incomplete, and the Mud Dogs are forced to punt. So, you know, Georgia State, you know, is holding their own so far, proving that maybe they shouldn't have been an underdog as the pass is complete to Kerry Brown for eight yards and is able to get the first down on the play. Ne next play, Micah Pitt is going to go up behind center. W looks like uh, he's going to 
pass it to his receiver, but he can't hold on to it. Nice job by, by the defense to break up the, te uh, the pass at the very last second. Third and ten now for Georgia State as the last play they were forced to throw it away. We got burned, but he can't hold on to it. That could have potentially been a touchdown for Georgia State, but instead it's going to be punted away. So we got very fortunate there. Next play, it's going to be a run for Stan Castillo. He's able to cut into the defense for a nice nine-yard gain. Very tough quarterback, I must say. Really love the 87 speed that he carries for the Mud Dogs offense. Does need to learn how to slide, but that's going to be the end of the first quarter, and it's a surprisingly close game. Both teams are dotted up at seven after one quarter of play. So here we are, first play of the second quarter. It's going to start with a run to Casey Bug. He's able to get 13 yards on the play. Really nice way to start the second quarter for the Mud Dogs. Next play, actually no, a couple of plays later, it's going to be a throw over the middle, and Darren Joyce is, was almost able to make an amazing catch, but unfortunately can't quite hang on to it. So here we are, third and eight. See what they can come up with here. It's going to be a four verticals route to TJ Wood, and he's able to hold on to it. And that's going to be a first down for your Mud Dogs inside the red zone. Very next play, going to call a quarterback slot option where Stan Casillo is able to get into the end zone. And it's going to be a touchdown for your Mud Dogs. Stan Castillo has his first rushing touchdown of the day. And it's going to be 14-7 with just a minute into the second quarter. And soon in possession, Georgia State is going to start on the 25-yard line. And is going to try to scramble. And he's just about able to get away. Bobby Boucher, though, is able to make the tackle to prevent any more yards. But still going to be a first down for Georgia State. Next play, this time, Micah Pitt lines up in shotgun. And once again, Micah Pitt is able to... Get away from the pressure and gets another first down using his legs. Very athletic quarterback. Definitely are going to have to try to get a spy on him or something because this quarterback is electric with his legs at times. As uh, Micah Pitt quite can't make the completion there, but that's more on the receiver. He made the, Obviously, he dropped it right there. Next play is going to be a fake handoff to the running back, but it's going to instead go to Lorenzo Clark streaking over the middle. It's going to gain eight yards on the play, and it's going to be third and short. So here we are, third and short. Bobby Boucher is going to try to move over to the right-hand side, but you know, uncharacteristically gets burned on the play, and it's going to be a massive game for Georgia State as they are able to get into the red zone for the second time in two possessions. So here, here we are, about, about in the red zone. His first play is going to be a throw over to the end zone, and Joe Thompson is there to, to break up the pass. Almost had the interception. Would have, had, would have really loved the interception right there, right now. Next play is going to be a drop back for Micah Pitts, and he's able to throw it into the end zone to Matt Stevenson. And it's going to be another touchdown for Georgia State as they even it up at 14. Ensuing kickoff, Casey Bug actually gets the kickoff. He has a lane. He only has one more man to beat, but he's not going to be able to catch him. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's going to score. Going to be a huge kickoff return for a touchdown as it is a new NCAA record for longest kick kickoff return in a college football game at 101 yards. What an achievement for Casey Bug, and that's going to pull us ahead 21-14. Next ensuing possession is going to be a halfback toss to that outside. Garcia does have a nice lane and is able to get a massive gain on the play. Garcia with a nice day so far. Only five carries thus far in the ball game, but he does have 44 yards already. Almost nine yards per carry. Very impressive day for the running back so far. Speaking of running... You know, Micah Pitt is not going to be able to do any of that as he gets sacked on the play by Bruce Terrell. And that's going to stall the drive out with the Mud Dogs getting the football up next. So here we are coming out of the commercial break. It's going to be a run with the Bucks sweep. And Casey Bugg's going to get the handoff and he's going to get a nice little gain of six yards on the play. Makes it a reasonable second and four. So here we are. A couple of play, Actually... 
couple of plays later, third and two now for the Mud Dogs, and Castillo doesn't have anywhere to go, so he's going to just take off using that 87 speed to his advantage as he's able to gain eight yards on the play and moves the chains for your South Central Louisiana State Mud Dogs. Next play this time is going to be another first and ten. He's going to drop back the pass and it's going to go to Darren Joyce who makes the catch and is able to spin off a tackler. But Ori is brought down with a gain of 28 yards on the play. And Darren Joyce having himself a nice little day so far already with 105 yards receiving and of course that long touchdown reception earlier today. Very nice if you play playing fantasy football and you have Darren Joyce on your team as Stan Castillo does get sacked for the first time. Forces the Mud Dogs to take their first time out. So second and 18 now, Georgia State bringing the blitz and he's going to step into his throw even though he's going to get hit and it's going to be another touchdown for you, Mud Dogs. As Darren Joyce just burns his defender and gets a really nice throw from Stan Castillo despite tremendous amount of pressure from the middle and it's going to be 28 to 14 now for your Mud Dogs. Ensuing possession with a minute and 24 seconds left in the first half is going to be a throw over to the right hand side where Matt Stevenson is able to break off a tackle before before being brought down and it looks like about midfield. Nice 17 yard gain on the play and it's going to be a first down for Georgia State. So here we are couple of plays later it's now third and eight and this time we do get burned off the back end as we now the Panthers are in the red zone before they move into the no huddle next play though they can't quite capitalize on it as M Micah Pitts is forced to throw it away resulting in a third and seven now so here we are third and seven would be really nice to be able to get get a stop here and give our offense just a little bit of time to make a play and it looks like we're going to get just that as Micah Pitts gets sacked once again the Mud Dogs will take a timeout and Looks like the Mud Dogs have 21 seconds left as Castillo takes a hit, but Wilson is able to make the catch. 25 yards gain on the play, and the Mud Dogs are going to move into their no huddle offense, knowing that there's only a handful of seconds left before the end of the first half. See what they come up with. Looks like it's going to be a, going to be a pass. Stan Castillo is looking around. He's going to run it. He's going to cut left, and he's going to get the first down before the Mud Dogs are going to take a timeout. All right, so here we are. The Mud Dogs have one more play. It looks like before they have to absolutely settle for a field goal. He's going to throw it up to John Espinoza, but he's not going to be able to come down with it on the one-on-one -on -one situation. So we are at the very end of the first half as the Mud Dogs are up 31-17. to And I do believe we do. Oh, no, never mind. Georgia State does have the ball to start the second half. But, you know, I believe in this team, and I think we'll be able to pull away. We'll see what happens starting in this second half and Micah Pitts is sacked once again a sack of six sacked yardage loss of six yards on the play as Jason Washington is able to just bully his way through and force the sack third and 11 now for Georgia State he's going to throw it out to the left hand side and Matt Stevenson's able to make the catch right before going out of bounds really hurts that you see a long gain like that Third and 24 now, hopefully this time around we actually get the stop, but you never know. And the beautiful game that is college football, and it's going to be a halfback screen, but the Mud Dogs are ready for it as Jason Washington goes with the running back and forces another loss of a couple yards on the play. Going to make it a very long fourth down, and the Mud Dogs are going to get the football right back. All right, so ensuing possession, we actually do have really good field position to start the game off. So we're going to throw it over to Ryan Wilson. Wilson does have a lane, and he's brought down inside the 15-yard line. Really nice uh, pitch play by Stan Castillo to Ryan Wilson. And it's going to be first and 10. Next play, it's going to be another run for Stan Castillo. And I thought he got into the end zone there. But, he, but regardless, he's extremely close, and it's going to be first and goal for the Mud Dogs. Next up, using the first and goal play, defensive lineman was focusing in on uh, Stan Castillo, but Casey Bug does get the handoff in this situation, and he does get into the end zone where the Mud Dogs will be able to take a 38-17 lead. All right, so now there's a little bit of urgency for Georgia State, knowing that you know they need to get a score here if they want to stay in this ball game, and it's going to start with a Pat Garcia taking the handoff 
gain of 15 yards on the play and is going to be a first down for Georgia State. Nice job, you know, of the blocking right there for their offensive line. See if they can continue the momentum. There, uh, a couple of plays later this time, it's a third and 11. He's going to chuck it deep, and Tyree Pickens, the transfer from Michigan State, who had to go through the JUCO process, found himself a Central, Central Louisiana State. He's going to outrun everybody, and it's going to be a defensive touchdown. Tyree Pickens makes his name known, only his second ever game with the South Central Louisiana State Mud Dogs. And it's going to be a 45-17 to lead. Really nice play by Tyree to make the interception and return for a touchdown. Following that huge interception play, Micah Piff tries to throw it to his right, but they are just not on the same page as the Mud Dogs have completely taken the momentum from this game. Next play, Micah Pitt's going to try to throw it to his right-hand side again, but this time Jason Woods is able to make the catch, and it's going to be another first down. Tyree Pickens gets beat off the line early on, and the safety tried to come in to try to jar the ball loose, but neither of those things worked out. Hopefully we can uh, stop him from going any further. As uh, Kerry Brown makes the seven-yard catch on the play, makes it a very reasonable second and three moving forward. So here we are, second and three for Georgia State. Micah Pitts is going to drop back the pass. Does he have enough time? I don't know, but Woods is able to break a tackle. And he's able to gain just six yards, but he's able to get the first down regardless. Very next play, this time Pitts is in the shotgun, worried about the, the rush. But this time he's not going to even have time to get the halfback screen off as he's going to be sacked for nine yards as well. Rob Duck just was relentless in getting to the quarterback some reason, Micah Pitts just didn't want to pull the trigger right there and, or throw it away for that matter. A couple of plays later now, Georgia State is facing a third and 20. Micah Pitts does have a little bit of time, but he's not going to be able to throw it far enough as the pressure was just too much for this Georgia State offensive line. Mud Dogs now will have the football, and depending on if they score on this drive or not, this might be the last drive for the first teamers. As you know, they, you know, at this point in the game, you know, we are just starting to pull away, and you know, if we score another touchdown, we might as well just bring in our second stringers. As Stan Castillo makes a really nice run, really trying our best to make sure that we don't get any of our guys hurt. As Stan Castillo throws it over the middle, but he's picked off. So forget about that talk about throwing in the second string guys. As Stan Castillo throws an interception, and that gives Georgia State just a little bit of life to start this fourth quarter. So here we are, fourth quarter. They just got the interception, but can they get a score to top that off? We'll see about that as a five-yard gain was made on the play by Matt Stevenson. That couple of plays later, Georgia State now facing a third and five at the roughly the same spot. As it's a fumble, and Bobby Boucher is there to pick it up. Unfortunately, he's tackled right as he picks up the ball, but... Georgia State fumbles the ball away, and Bobby Boucher is there to make the recovery, which means South Central Louisiana State is going to have some really nice positioning to start this upcoming drive. Next pl play is going to be a run for Stan Castillo off the read option, gain of 10 yards on the play, making it second and inches. Following that nice little 10-yard run, it's going to be a run for Casey Bug, and he has an easy lane, and it's going to be a touchdown for your Mud Dogs. Mud Dogs are just running away with this game as looks like this just might be the last meaningful play for the first team offense and defense. The Mud Dogs are going to end up winning this game 66 to 31 as the second stringers are going to be able to get some action in midway through the fourth quarter. Both teams scored a couple of touchdowns against each other in junk time, but the Mud Dogs controlled this game and just really started to pull away in the second half of his ball game. So just a quick look at the stats since both quarterbacks got to come in today. Stan Castillo was 7 for 13 for 207 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. And G. Gannell even got the throw pass. It was only one pass for 10 yards, but did go for a touchdown. So he does have the extremely high quarterback rating of over 500. Very good performance by both of them. Stan Castillo also led in rushing attempts with 11, uh, rushed for 76 yards and a touchdown, followed by seven carries from Casey Bug and three from Carl Wright, 
who did have a massive touch or not a touchdown run, but a run of 54 yards. Uh, so again, another really good performance off the ground. Didn't really throw the ball that much today. Ryan Wilson and Darren Joyce are the only two receivers that had multiple catches, but Joyce had 142 yards and two touchdown catches, while Carlos Burrell only had that one catch, but he did have the touchdown. TJ Wood, of course, also one catch for 26 yards. Offensive line has a solid day. They had six pancakes versus one sack. You know, definitely did a good job of controlling line of scrimmage. Shout out to Tim Smith for having two pancakes as a wide receiver. I didn't really see that coming, but hey, I'm totally down with it. And then finally on the defensive end, Bobby Boucher and Wow Rubber Ducks led the team in tackles with seven apiece. Uh, Rubber Ducks, of course, had three tackles for a loss and a sack on top of that. Jason Washington, um, and actually, uh, you know, team did a really good job like getting to the quarterback. I'm just looking through how many sacks we had, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we had 11 sacks totaled. So, real good job by our football team in order to get to the quarterback. Was able to force a fumble as well as uh, force some key mistakes out there that led to this really amazing uh, victory for the South Central Louisiana State football team. Of course, Ben Miller, the uh, true sophomore, uh, led the team in sacks with three. Tyree Pickens had the only interception of the day from the Georgia State quarter cornerback. Uh, Tyree Pickens, you know, is a transfer from Michigan State, is uh, able to return it for 71 yards for a touchdown. And again, Ben Miller was also there to force the fumble with uh, Bobby Boucher being in the vicinity to recover the fumble. All right, so next week we are going to be going up against the Troy Trojans here at home on the South Central Louisiana State campus. They are going to be slightly, they look slightly better on paper, but we have had a much better season so far. But, you know, that's really all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you like college football as well as pro basketball content. But until then, I will see you guys next time. And thank you guys so much for making me a part of your day. Peace.